Welcome to another teardown video. This time it is a Wobbler. <laughs> I just love that name. So this one is called SW3330. It is from Nord Mende Electronics. And as far as I can see from the front, we can do all sorts of modulations. We've got some center frequencies and some marker frequencies. I don't know exactly what that is. The center of something we need to play a little bit more with. Okay, we got a variable voltage on this one and variable attenuation on that one. And look at that, 60 ohms, really? And then all the ranges. At the moment we can see it is in range 45 to 85. It is that range. Huh? So, yep, this is really, really, really tough. So there's a mechanical problem with the dial. This dial is of course supposed to turn around, right? And update the numbers when you dial here. And okay, this one seems to be working. And when I move this around, there are loose parts inside. So that means I am forced to open. We can't just plug it in. So let's open and find the loose parts. I am on my mission to open, but meanwhile, what is that exactly? Okay, frequency amp. I'm a little bit worried about that one. What is that? Okay. Hmm. I don't know. No clue. But that is mains input. I think we've got access to some trimmers. And it looks like it's fairly easy to open. Also, try and note this case and even the handle. This whole design, is it just me with a feeling? Where have you seen this before? Philips. This is a total, total steal from Philips. And we're in. <laughs> I think we got more PCBs and a lot of funny stuff in here. But that is a really beautiful PCB. Also with logos and everything on it. I'm a little bit curious about those ICs or one. Yeah. And this is the output attenuator so is that a pot meter inside a little metal can with a coax like that that is really cute and also when i look at this doesn't this look a little bit like old tv sets which you just unclick something and then you can hook this up see <laughs> and then we got a screw here to stop this i can't wait to try that Yep, isn't that lovely? That is exactly what it was. And all those things that's like connectors. Beautiful, this PCB. A double-sided PCB with solder mask and the whole fancy pansy. And all sorts of goody trimmers. But that is really service friendly. And we got a box of secrets with the. Oh, is that the. Ooh, geared dial. Lots of nice mechanics. And here we got some couplings. <laughs> what is that down there? Can you see that one? Well, that is cute. I th I can see what is that down there. Some loose parts and a sp 
cable that is the output coax right that goes through some stuff and here's another magic box mains transformator maybe we got some rectifiers and s or maybe this is oh yeah okay good this is voltage um, selection board okay easy easy everything is nice and safe let's open up some more and we're in like they say wow look at that big big massive secret box of good things Ooh, what is that that is oh that is a broken thingy why did they do it like that that is impossible to fix and, well this wasn't exactly stored in a clean room it is full of goody goodies and some it's not exactly super duper dangerous but of course you need to remove this a little bit before you power up good old stuff yeah see this is the I want the golden child here we got a little bit better picture of the attenuator that is a little bit untraditional the variable type but okay it's supposed to work to 800 megahertz so i think that is a pretty cool pot meter if that really works all that way and here is the adjustment or maybe the release and repair access for this thingy i don't know exactly what to call this but that is really difficult to repair it looks a little bit like those you find in curtains right are we ready for smoke and action so what i did is i dialed this in for 7 to 12 and then easy easy like that then we have it and okay here we go for the scope it is also prepared so let's just plug this in crank it up to zero mains is on Ooh. i hear some clickety clackety cluggity But there's no output. No, no, no. Is that normal? Did you hear that? The kaboom? Oh, 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 hear this. Ooh, that can't be good. And now it's using 40 watts. instead of 14 so this is definitely spark so that was the mains okay but this is definitely sparkity spark we don't get any this is just dead as can be no 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 thingy thingy using 42 watts are you nuts there's definitely something in here that is using a lot of power on doing whatever it is so it is time for tear down and we are in once again we've got some different modules and some really funny components here i get guess there's some resonator coupling capacitor 
capacitor diodes and stuff here. Look at that, that's interesting. What have we got here? Is this a coax connection from one port to another? And again, we'll see all those fancy parts. And here a little thingy thingy. This is quite cool. And we got four more or less identical PCBs. I guess we can just... Yes, we can. So that will be VCO modules or something right? like that. Or should, uh, oscillator modules. And if we look at the windings on the coils in the first one. So let's skip one. Take that. That one. Yep. No big surprise, right? More windings and stuff. So this is a lower frequency. So that will be the different frequency generator ports. So far, so good. And we got some fancy metal down there and uh, interesting things. So how are we going to get in there and see? It's just one big fancy pansy module. But it's... Oh. So this will be from 1972, by the way. And I guess all we see in this module, transistors and IOs. Okay, there's a, is it, oh yeah, they're coded, right? So I can't plug this in here. Oh, we got colors, yay! This is not for the stupid, you see? They're trying to help us. How oh, about here? Can we? Can we really? Come on! Yes, of course it was a connector. That is what I thought. Ooh, you, 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 you! I nearly broke my fingers. Ooh, look at that little diode uh, doing good stuff that one and into the magic parts down there I can't wait to get in there and see what we got and we got some wires to a PCB and down here we got some more secret diodes and all the fancy all right I'll, I'll open here Ooh, that was a big disappointment. A big lot of nothing. So that means, hey, where's all the good stuff? I think those are pretty cool, those disc ceramic capacitors. Okay, so we need to get down below here. Wow! We're inside the bottom module with the frequency adjustment and the band switch. Let's try and change the dial switch or the band switch. Look at that! So this is like Enigma style. <laughs> and you can... So what happens if you unhook this? I guess you'll get access to the magic code wheel of this frequency. Whoa. So that is... Really, really a cool switch and they're all numbered and contain frequency or band paths uh, filter or something wow that was really great 
I love this mechanic. Really well done. Let's take the first one and have a look how that one looks. <clears throat> Come on, man. Oh yeah, look at that. So this is a much lower frequency. And I guess this is the highest. So this is the magic behind the different bands. <laughs> Unfortunately, there are some shorter stuff. So when I go and enable the sweep and all that stuff, we just have a short and nothing really happens anywhere. So there's not much I can't do. And the thing is that I can't use this for anything at all. It is not doing anything today that I can't do with a tiny little instrument that weighs like a one hundredth of this. But it's still a lot of fun to see how they did everything. I love the mechanical solutions. I think we're gonna disassemble a lot more because I'm not going to put this together again anyway. So I might as well just have a lot of fun finding all sorts of cool details. That would be a really, really nice op amp, I guess. L709. So, I mean, they were really ahead of their time in 1972. Really? It's all full of transistors and stuff. And you see, in the 71 is the marking on that one. I bet. No, there's no marking on that one. But yeah, here, see, 71. Yeah, there was also, yeah, some transistors here. Yep. And feed through capacitors. It's, I mean, everything is done really, really like you could have done this the best way, right? Everything is thick and stable. No jokes anywhere here. Let's have a look at that. So they're trying to avoid ground loops because this entire case is not connected to, sh to the chassis. No, no, no. See, all this is plastic as well. But there's a wire here that connects all this metal to the ground parts of this PCB. And also, so that means, oh, okay, so this means the RF output is what connects the front plate. Yes, exactly. That is the one and only point to chassis. Ah, <laughs> so there's no ground loops, except this PCB. Okay, it's all the way around and only, okay, here as well. And here as well. <laughs> Look at the sexy design of the traces. This is just so 70s. <laughs> you would never do this today. But it looks just so nice. I really miss this kind of, you know, layout style. <laughs> that track is just wonderful. Uh, it's not a dig. Ooh, it's falling apart. a code okay that is pretty smart I'm telling you they are really clever dudes those Germans you see so there's not going to be any screw-ups 
Yeah. And this one I can't reach. So that means it can only go here. Smarty, smarty dudes. So now we are a lot more in. And this is the gearbox. Also what I found here to be really, really cool is this flexible coupling and it's made in a really, really cool way. See? And it's a very flexible and yet absolutely without any kind of slip slap. And there's another one on the main span switch. Same style. Really, really cool. Here's what I'm scoring. <laughs> I need to have a, a little try out with this pot meter here and see if that is any good at any kind of frequencies. It's uh, okay. It is a, a 60 ohm attenuator, but it's not that far away from 50. So I bet I will be able to measure it. But it's a linear pot meter without any clickety clackety settings or anything. So I kind of like it. And it's with BNC, so it should be fairly easy to test. It's always fun when you find something that is really, really bad or crazy or funny design. I don't know if I can put my camera steady here. Can you see this? How much out of center those gears are like. And now they're biting here and this here is nice and loose. And then it's uh, biting real hard. And it has been like this ever since this was assembled. Because, you know, you need to put those screws exactly in the middle, so this thing is in the middle. Uh, yeah, that was bad. <laughs> this is funny. I have another challenge, because I really want to have this cool pot meter, and I don't want to break the wire. But see, it goes through the hole. How do I get it? Mm, I don't want to cut it, you know? So I think it's maybe it's time for angle grinder again, but it's... Look, it's all this material is going to take a whole minute or something. Keep finding funny, funny things. Have a look at this one. So this is the center of the modulation in and output. This is a feed-through capacitor. It's connected to the outside. And then the pin is actually connected to the PCB to the ground. So they're using this capacitor as a decoupling. And then there's a resistor to something. <laughs> Isn't that just a little bit the other way around to do stuff? But Hey, if it works, it works. I think it's <laughs> it's all right. But I think it's the first time I saw this one. You see? Yep, that's what I'm saying. And of course, I got it out without cutting the cable too much. I nicked it a little bit with the ankle grinder, but of course, it was easy, easy peasy. And look at that. Those are the couplings, so there's electrical isolation, and then it's nice and flexible, but there's absolutely no slippity slap, and they got two of them made that way. Really cute. Of course I had to take this thing all the way out. Uh, that was actually a little bit difficult, but it's just beautifully made. And also, oh, look at all the uh, trimmer capacitors for the resonant point. You can access them via the holes in here. And those holes 
are of course drilled so you can access them from the back side. Isn't that just fantastic thinking? <laughs> and all this was done without catting because they didn't have cat. So how did they figure all this out to make it work? Yes, I'm actually a little bit impressed. And here is the back side of the contact. And look, it goes to the capacitor here. And I believe this is the oscillator transistor. But isn't it a little bit cool that they were able to tune this capacitor? Because this capacitor doesn't really change a lot, right? So that means it's the same tuning or it's the same capacity change that this is doing for the entire range, right? Even if it's doing, um, where the heck is the, where's the funky wheel? Even if, if it's doing the lowest frequency, right? Oh yeah, here it is. Oh, sorry, it's falling on the floor. Here it is. So the lowest frequency range is from three to six megahertz and the highest is 460 to 860. So how is that possible to do with this capacitor change? So I believe that they are like doubling and mixing and doing tricks, right? Because otherwise this is not possible. That I think we could reveal by looking in the manual. Yep, I think so. All right, I am done with tonight's funny, funny things here. I will just play with the Natanoita. I am normally not that easy to impress when it comes to RF products. And this is from a product supposedly to do like 900 megahertz, right? But look at this analog variable pot meter. And of course this is a 60 ohm pot meter. So this is full and it's minus five dB at 1.6 gigahertz. So this is a full span 3.2 gigahertz you're seeing from zero to 3.2 gigahertz. So let's just dial this down a little bit. I am impressed. There's a tiny little resonance up there. Look at that. How the heck is this done? Okay, it's not super straight, but again, we got attenuation, right? Okay, here we got some dB, but it's, it's variable and it isn't doing anything like really bad and and ugly. Ooh, here at full <laughs> attenuation. Okay, it is also not mounted in any kind of. But there is a resonance. A little bit over my capability here, but yeah, it's it's really really good, amazing. <laughs>